This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 6 this is section 9 part 1 Abilities, Work and Purpose Part 1 David We live in a false world. Everything in it is false. What can we do with that? We get up in the morning and tell ourselves it is all false. But that does not make the feelings of constriction about consequences go away. What we really need is to turn it all over to the Holy Spirit. The section called Healing as the Recognition of Truth starts to articulate what that will be like. The Holy Spirit teaches you to use what the ego has made to teach the opposite of what the ego has learnt. Text chapter 7, section 4 This world is learnt. Anything that can be learned can be unlearned. The ego is learned. In the self-concept versus self section, it says, The building of a concept of the self is what the learning of the world is for. This is its purpose, that you come without a self and make one as you go along. Text chapter 31, section 5 From the moment we can speak, we learn to label things. This is a ball. That is a table. You are a boy or a girl, etc. There we go. The mind wants a false concept and now it seems to be learning separation. Learning that everything has a different purpose. The learning of the world just reinforces what the mind believes. But, again... The Holy Spirit can use what the ego made. The kind of learning is a, is as irrelevant as is the particular ability that was applied to the learning. All you need do is make the effort to learn, for the Holy Spirit has a unified goal for the effort. If different abilities are applied long enough to one goal, the abilities themselves become unified. This is because they are channelized in one direction or in one way. Ultimately, then, they all contribute to one result and by so doing, their similarity rather than their differences is emphasized. Text, Chapter 7, Section 4 It seems as if everyone has different aptitudes, but all abilities, if put towards the same purpose, will be channelized. The differences between them will fade from awareness. Playing the violin, for example, is a very highly developed ability. But the question underneath all this is, what is it for? Friend, so after a while it does not matter whether I am spreading butter on bread or playing the violin? Because of all my abilities are channelized in one direction and become unified? David, the good news is that I do not have to pretend not to have skills. I can still use them, but the purpose is changed. As we move our attention towards forgiveness as our one purpose, some things will start to fall away. We may no longer find ourselves involved in things that seemed to serve before. But nothing is wasted in the sense that all abilities can be used as long as they are being channelized. All abilities should therefore 
be given over to the Holy Spirit, who understands how to use them properly. He uses them only for healing, because he knows you only as whole. By healing, you learn of wholeness, and by learning of wholeness, you learn to remember God. Healing is the way to undo the belief in differences, being the only way of perceiving the sonship as one. Text chapter 7, section 4, paras 4 and 5. Healing could be equated with having one unified purpose for everything. When you so desire to look through the Holy Spirit's lens at everything, however it seems to be used in the world of form, changes in behavior will come automatically as a byproduct of that desire. Miracles should not be consciously chosen. All you have to do is be ready. The Holy Spirit will do the miracles through you. You have to let go of the component of behavior. It has to be a byproduct of your thoughts. When there is still a sense of trying to control, the miracles will not be pure. What a strain it is to try to figure out what to do and what to say. There is an enormous amount of strain when you want to do it all just right. You are caught in the level of form, which is guilt-inducing. Friend, and if someone is not accepting the miracle as you are offering it to them, You feel like you have done something wrong. David, there we go again. Guilt. The body is nothing more than a framework for developing abilities, which is quite apart from what they are used for. That is a decision. Text chapter 7, section 5. Here is the form or content theme again. A decision in mind is content. A decision of purpose can be made by asking about every single thing. What is it for? Training the mind to ask that question in every situation is so opposite and backwards from the way in which the deceived mind thinks. The deceived mind goes plunging into things already thinking it knows what they are for. The deceived mind is convinced that it already knows what everything is for. It always has something to do with form and outcome. Whether it is shopping, laundry, going to work, playing tennis, etc., We must accept the Holy Spirit's purpose of healing or forgiveness as our only function. But this is only part of it. The other part is letting go of the ego's goals. The self-concept is on anything we have expectations. The self-concept is in on anything we have expectations about or an investment in. The ego has all kinds of goals and outcomes that it wants. Remember, the deceived mind thinks the self-concept is its existence, so it perceives the Holy Spirit's purpose as requiring sacrifice. We want to bring this into the context of what we are moving towards. Knowing that things are going to fade away automatically, rather than thinking we have to fight the ego every step of the way 
and give things up that we value. Workbook lesson 154 articulates what we are moving towards. I am among the ministers of God. How many of us have thought of ourselves as ministers of God? A key thing to keep in mind as we go into this is that it is all about a loosening, beginning to get the me and the my out of there. You do not write down all of your abilities and then try to figure out how you are going to unify it so that it all works out. You are not the one that is going to figure it out. That is good news. You do not have to feel the weight of trying to put these things together. Turn your skills and abilities over to the Holy Spirit. He is the one that has to make those decisions. He can see how best to use them. Let us today be neither arrogant nor falsely humble. We have gone beyond such foolishness. We cannot judge ourselves, nor need we do so. These are but attempts to hold decision off and to delay commitment to our function. It is not our part to judge our worth, nor can we know what role is best for us. What we can do within a larger plan, we cannot see in its entirety. Our part is cast in heaven, not in hell. And what we think is weakness can be strength. What we believe to be our strength is often arrogance. Whatever your appointed role may be, it was selected by the voice for God, whose function is to speak for you as well. Seeing your strengths exactly as they are and equally aware of where they can be best applied, for what, to whom and when, he chooses and accepts your part for you. He does not work without your own consent. But he is not deceived in what you are and listens only to his voice in you. It is through his ability to hear one voice, which is his own, that you become aware. At last, there is one voice in you. And that one voice appoints your function and relays it to you, giving you the strength to understand it, do what it entails, and to succeed in everything you do that is related to it. God has joined His Son in this, and thus His Son becomes His messenger of unity with Him. Workbook Lesson 154, Paras 1 through 3 There is a sentence in there with three parts to it. And that one voice appoints your function and relays it to you, giving you the strength to understand it, do what it entails, and to succeed in everything you do that is related to it. You can see how much this relies on listening. It is like the prayer, I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. Text chapter 2, section 5a. The only way our abilities can be unified is to literally take instructions moment by moment on faith. 
That is the flip side of the way it seems in this world. The world says that in order to be secure and confident, you must plan and have everything well scoped out. But this is a totally intuitive approach to listening. The analytical abilities that you have relied on are all out the window. It can seem a little scary, like walking off the ledge and trusting there is something there to catch you. End of part one. We will continue with the concluding part of section 9 of chapter 6 in book 2 in tomorrow's episode.